We can talk about the squatter thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's up with the, the squatter? The squatter thing? thing is interesting, dude. The squatter thing is very interesting. Have you heard about this? Yeah. No, so I've, I've had to deal with it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, like, yeah. it just is, like, a huge thing. I was even looking it up to see, like, what is going on. Like, it's just, like, super popular, especially as of last month. Like, yeah. it's being covered everywhere. And, like, the headlines are crazy. Like, there's a bunch of headlines where it's, like, uh, man prevents family from retiring in dream home with Down syndrome son. Like, squatter prevents a family from retiring in their dream home. Like, man wins a dead woman's home. Uh, and, like, there's just, like, insane stories of, like, this Beverly Hills mansion across the street from LeBron James that's, like, overrun with, like, squatters that are just using it to, like, party. It's, so, it's so like, a just $4 so million dollar property. Wow. So just so we can, you know, kind of explain and, like, uh, you know, set the tone of this conversation. Everybody should know what squatting is. If you don't, there are, I guess, some sort of protections for this shit goes deep. Yeah, I did not realize how yeah. like complicated and nuanced this is. So a squatter is somebody that goes and lives in a home that's not theirs. Yeah, that's how it's understood. That's how it's yeah, understood. Yeah. Now it appears that there are some protections for people that do this. Yeah. Yes. Okay, break it down. So there's a bunch of things. So this one is just funny. I just bring this up because it's like the most crazy example. This is literally in the middle of Beverly Hills. If you look at like the map of people around him, it's like LeBron James, like John Legend is right there. Yeah. And the guy's hilarious. He's like this Italian dude. One all night bash drew 645 revelers and didn't end until 9 a.m. Was this turned into a nightclub essentially? Better than that, it's a mansion. <laughs> You know, I mean, it was classier than that, I would say. I had like But, a, but this was basically a party house, <laughs> you know? uh, At some point, yeah. Here's what that <laughs> I mean, it's so funny. You know, like, so this is a nightclub. He's like, it's not a nightclub. I'm not a fucking animal. And then they asked the guy, they're like, so are you going to stay here for a while? He's like, no, I might move on to something nicer. Maybe get a different mansion or something like that. This dude's hilarious. But there's just a bunch of these happening all over the country that people are talking about. So How does it happen? It goes all the way back to the medieval ages, oh, medieval wow. times, feudal okay. times. Yeah, yeah. Literally, like I didn't realize this shit went so far back. It goes back even farther than that. Like there's like rules in like Roman law about like how to deal with like land disputes. Okay. So basically, it's this thing called adverse possession. Okay. So hypothetically, we're two like nobles back in medieval England, right? We have like a bunch of land that's near each other, and we're talking like hundreds of acres that's like just sort of like given to you from like you inherited it, whatever. Yeah. And like in between your land, there's like some land that no one's using. It's just like not being, you can't go all the way over there. It's like hundreds of acres away. It's like, and no one's looking at it, no one's seeing it. Yeah. So what they kind of had was like common grounds where like if some dude just kind of came by and like set up a house there, he could just kind of like use the land. And if you never said anything about it, over a certain period of time, it would just become his. And kind of the reason this would happen is like, you basically have a guy that lives there. He builds up a house. He has a bunch of kids. His kids have kids. All of a sudden, now he's a community of like 100 people in a tiny little village, hundreds of miles away from anyone. It prevents the nobles, like great grandson, from pulling up being like, hey, oh, this, is mine. this is actually mine. Wow. It basically gives them the right to say, hey, we've been here for 50 years. I don't know anything about you. My great great grandfather was on this land. This land is ours. And yeah. it gives them the protection to say, like, if you're here and no one says shit about it for a certain period of time, you can have it. This is, yeah, and it sounds ridiculous, but think about it. There is a time where literally all the land was owned by how many nobles are there? You have the kingdom and then you have the nobles. So mm -hmm. let's just call it 50 people. Maybe it's less. And they just parceled up all the land. Mm -hmm. They're not even using it, they're not even looking at it. So it does kind of make sense. In, in a way to create some like democratization of the land mm -hmm. that you let other people have the right to squat. And it basically gives like an incentive to like use it or lose it basically. Yes. So like use the land, make something out of it. And if you're not really doing anything about it and you don't say anything, yeah. then someone else that's using it, the government will be like, yeah, we like this community. So was this like it. written into law by the kingdom? Why was, would the kingdom, because the kingdom was like, I could just fucking take all this land. Why it was basically like understood as British common law. Yeah. And like the Brit like the British royal at the time, I think it was like Henry the First or some shit, was basically like, We're gonna permit this because like these peasants need some place to go. Okay. Yeah. But it, if it they was, did want to take your land, they still would take it. Yeah, probably. Yeah. 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 But I like this idea, like to a certain extent, use it or lose it. Yeah. Right? Like let's say you have like hundreds and hundreds of thousands and thousands of We're acres. We're talking about huge swaths of land. Yeah. yeah. Also, you're a not state. seeing other people. It's an entire yeah. state. Yeah. You're not even that. seeing somebody. Yes. You never even you don't even know that they're on your land. So you just get to keep that because 
you guys declared it years ago. You just happened to be a noble person. And your great, great grandfather, you've been here five generations. Yeah. And so then it kind of like extends even like to modern America where it's like, let's say you have two ranchers, right? Yeah. And they have two ranches. Again, we're talking hundreds, thousands of acres right next to each other. Yeah. And you build a fence and it kind of is hard to like demarcate exactly where one land starts and one land ends. Let's say it's over like a hundred feet and it stays like that for, you know, 50 years. And all of a sudden you look at the title and you're like, wait a second, our land is 50 feet over that way. That's like, you know, 30 acres, that's ours. You can't then go and be like, hey, give it to us. Because basically you've said like, this fence is here, enough time has passed, you haven't said anything about it, so tough shit. This is how Brooklyn and Queens got separated. Oh, There's right. no reason why they should be separated. It's literally yeah. one island. It's just a dumb line that goes like crazy down certain streets in Brooklyn and Queens. But it was the Dutch and the English couldn't uh-huh. settle. It was two people, basically the Dutch of Bushwick and the English of Ridgewood or what a, vice versa. And they had a big argument and they literally could not find the middle ground. And then they found a rock called Arbitration Rock because the government was finally like, we got to start putting lines down yeah. and keeping these people away from each other. And they made a rock, the middle point of Brooklyn and Queens. Weird. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. And so for a certain period of time, people- still there? Yep. Oh, fire. Now that is frustrating, that ranch shit. Just because someone put the fucking fence wrong, they but get to keep the land. You got to say something about it. You got to be like, wait a second, this fence is actually wrong. And if it's within, like, most places have, like, 20 or 30 year windows. But aren't we incentivizing people to put the fence wrong? Yeah, this happens in, in common, like, in Florida all the time. People mm-hmm. will put their fence on that side of someone's property line. And if they can hold it for 20 years, they get another two feet. Uh, but I, that's I, don't, also, I don't love this just because we're incentivizing people to, to take corrupt. advantage of their neighbor. But yeah. you could then just be like, hey, you took my shit and then take it to a civil court and then the court would be like, yeah, they have to move it and then they're fined or something. Sure, but now I now the burden is on me to hire a lawyer to mm-hmm. spend money because this person did something it, that was- It's yeah. a net loss either way. Unethical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't gain two feet on their side if they do it. Mm-hmm. If there was a punishment like, hey, if you do this and you're wrong, you lose two feet. They have to mm-hmm. pay to pull the fence up and shit. But basically yeah, but that's the wrong. law Sorry, prevents- They have to pay to put it there. Like, yeah, that's still no gain. They should it. pay mm-hmm. to pull the fence up. Yeah. They put it in the wrong place knowing. Yeah. The law prevents like squabbling after a certain period of time. So right. if you didn't say shit for 30 years, it's like, we're not going to go back and forth and waste resources to try to figure this out. It just yeah. is. But let, let's say, for example, and again, I'm just trying to, uh, it, to me, the issue is not the guy who makes the mistake. Mm-hmm. The issue is that now the system has incentivized, let's say we own this big ranch land, right? Mm-hmm. You and I both were neighbors and you just go, hey, Schultz, I want to set up just like a fence because I have some sheep that I want to keep in. I don't want them going onto your land. I know that, you know, you protect your land. You keep it a certain way. I just want to do it. And I go, oh, that's a great idea, Mark. Uh, you propose the plan. I agree with the proposed plan. Then you go put in the fence, and then mm-hmm. you have this new plan where you're taking another 30 acres from me. Mm-hmm. I'm agreeing to your proposed plan, but I'm not walking in there and checking every single stump. Like, I don't know. Like, you're so incentivized to to fuck me mm-hmm. by the law, where the law should be punishing people that fuck their neighbors over. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I, yeah. I don't know exactly, but I think there are punishment if you like lose in civil court. Like you're fine, and I think you then have to like settle with the person that you stole from. Yeah, you should have to give them something. It should. It, That's how you, I understand. It. If you can prove that someone did it on purpose, this should be viewed as as theft. Yeah, yeah, and I think it is, and I think you. And that's grand fine. larceny. That's jail. Yeah, depending like, on the amount depending of time. on the amount of land that was stolen, mm-hmm. it's really fucked up. Anyway, go on. So there's some periods of time where people actually like squatters. Post World War II in England, the whole all of London is bombed. You oh. have all these baby boomers coming home, yeah. and basically you have like a housing crisis. And so these British people are then finding like dilapidated, like derelict homes that got bombed. They're kind of just like pulling up, fixing it, turning into like livable communities. And people are like, wow, look at the British people. They're not homeless. They're actually like industrious and making the best of their situation. So another, for a period, they were like praised. And then what did, hold on. And then what about the, what did the people that owned those homes that were bombed do? With well, the fucking just died. So it's like, uh, no one is looking after this. We don't know whose it is. We like there's not like record keeping that's perfect. It's all on paper that got burned in some like firebombing. Mm. What who's what is it? <sighs> okay, I get. So I'm not even looking at that as a squatter. I only see a squatter as somebody who is living in a home or area or so space that is owned by someone else. That's what actual squatting is. Right. So for it to be considered actual squatting, it needs five things, sometimes six. It needs to be hostile. This one's actually interesting. You have to take it without some type of or like contract or some type of understanding that it's owned by someone else. So you can't have like a lease and then overstay it. That's no longer a squatter. That's like a holdover tenant. So it has to be hostile where you don't have some type of like written agreement. It has to be actual. You have to be living there and like improving the place and living as if you were the owner paying taxes and shit. 
open and notorious. You can't be hiding or like being protective. You have to just be like walking around doing shit like how you normally would. Continuous, it has to be the like, full length of the time. You can't just show up like once a year. And then some, in some places it has to be in good faith, meaning that you have to have some type of reasonable reason that you can present in front of a judge that you would get this land or you would get this home. Right. So those are like the five things. Like Louisiana has an interesting one where it's like, you just need to basically have it for 30 years uninterrupted and you can keep it. Like it, theirs is like even more loose. And it exists because it gives ownership. It basically like, there's a bunch of reasons. It gives a statute of limitations to like land squabbling back in the day. Right. It, it makes people kind of like cure minor defects within like a lease. Let's say like you sell me a piece of land and you're like, yeah, it's everything including the lake or including the pond. Yeah. And then in the title, it gets fucked up and it doesn't include the pond, but I keep the land. Yeah. And if no one says anything about the pond, then the pond is mine after 30 years just because it was originally in the verbal contract there, but not in the title. Got it. Mm -hmm. So it like settles up like that minor little thing. And then also like, it gives that productivity of land thing, use it or lose it. So what's happening now is nothing to do with squatting. Got it. So all of these stories that people are looking at are called squatters rights, but it's not squatting. They're basically taking advantage of a system that people did find advantageous for potentially everybody. Uh, and now they're just <laughs> using it in their favor legally. Kind of. Like it's barely even that because it's like, it's basically just like tenant, tenant rights. rights. Yeah. And so, which basically has nothing uh, to do. So whenever people call squatters rights, it's sort of a misnomer. Ah, uh, right. Because squatting seems so much more salacious. Just a random stranger breaks into your home and just it's lives It's a term there. that makes so much sense. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. call them squatters. Vivid. Yeah, yeah it paints yeah. a picture in your head. Yeah, so yeah. it makes sense. But under the law, like, I don't think there's any, like, clear legal definition. Okay, so all these stories are... They're, they're interesting. So it's like, the story that people are talking about is like, okay, you go on vacation for three weeks, and then someone pulls up in your house... And then they can just live there and you can't get them out. And then the government fucks you. That's like what the story is. Some of the stories are even like some woman went out for groceries and then came back and someone was living in her house and then she couldn't get them out. Yeah, these right. don't sound real. Yeah, the first, that one is not real. Yeah. Like you can basically call the police and be like, hey, there's a breaking and entering. Yeah. The police show up and they're like, hey, are you the tenant that lives here? And the guy's like, yes, I am. And they're like, oh, can you just show me your ID? Show me a piece of mail. Show me a lease. Show me anything. And if they don't have that, they'll get arrested immediately. Got it's just yeah. breaking and entering. So like the law protects that. Yeah. And so basically in New York, you have a thing where if you live in a place for over 30 days, then that's when they get tenant rights. Even if you are living there illegally? Yes. yes. Like, let's say, for example, I went on vacation, somebody moved into my home, I come back after 30 days. I mean, that's yeah. crazy yeah. short. They get tenant rights. Yeah. yeah. They get tenant rights. And, and then what is the justification for that? I'm assuming it basically protects people from having like oral agreements. So you go on vacation, you're like, yeah, Mark, you can stay in my place. Jerk off my shower, whatever you want to do. And then you leave, and you can't just come back and be like, this guy's blah, 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 he's in my place. And it's like, dude, you told me I could stay here for no, six months. write up a contract. Like, that's an easy solution. But then you tear up the contract. This is back in the day when it's like a piece of paper, you can just tear it up, you can so lose the contract. this is a law that needs to be changed, basically? Yeah, a lot of people are suggesting that. Yeah. The 30-day tenancy law. And then mm -hmm. tenant rights would be like, you can't turn off the electricity, you can't turn off the water, you can't change the locks. Back that's in the day, the shit that sucks. Yeah. So it's like, if you're a landlord, you still have to, If even if this person is squatting or just staying there unlawfully, you still have to keep the electricity on, you still have to maintain the place. If you stop doing any of those things, now you're in violation of their rights and they, they can, one, stay there longer and make a case for not having to pay because- And is the justification for this innocent until proven guilty? In other words, if somebody is there for a certain amount of time, the state assumes that they have a legal reason to be there. And until that is disputed in court- Yes. Got it. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Whereas if you're the landlord, you know if somebody is living there illegally, yeah. but, but based on our justice system, they cannot assume that mm -hmm. this person is breaking the law. And they the cops pull up. Yes. The cops pull up and then you have mail that's in your name with the address and you maybe have like a fake lease or something and the police are like, we can't take this person out. We can't evict them. So now this is a civil matter that has to be taken care of. In, in and then until it's court. getting taken care of in court, you get to stay there and live there. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Now, now it's, now I understand how it's taking advantage of our justice system, which the, with the assumption of in innocence, mm -hmm. I understand why those rights exist. And there used to be no tenant laws and tenants used to get fucked all the time. Yes. Some guy would be like, oh, I don't like you because- Get the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. oh, you're dating a black girl. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm, I'm a racist dude, fuck you, I'm turning your electricity off, get the fuck yeah. out of my place. Hey, your kids are too loud. 
they're screaming, they're yeah. waking people Turn up, the water get the up. fuck out. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Right. So these laws in New York, well, I imagine around the country, they had to be created to protect people that were being um, put under abusive conditions by their landlords. It's like unions. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Necessary. Right. There were foreigner. potentially abusive conditions and you want to protect these people. Yeah. Um, that kind of makes sense. In some yeah. cases, people even get scammed. So like what this guy with the mansion is kind of alleging is like you go out of town for two months. Let's say you leave for six months. You're going to your fucking other house, whatever, right? Someone comes in, they change all the locks, they get mail delivered, they're now squatting. And then they find someone to say, hey, I'm gonna give you a lease for the place. I'm the owner. Do you want a great deal on a, on a, on a apartment? Oh, fuck. And so now a family, let's say a couple or a single mom and her kid are now getting put into an apartment. Oh, under, by the guy who originally, who originally squatted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But because they have tenants' rights now. So now the, you come back and you're like, yo, why the fuck are you in my house? And they're like, what? It's I not your house. I'm paying this money. Is Steve's house, and he yeah. gave me the lease. Wow. And you're like, no, it's my house. And then it's like, what are we doing? I've been living here for four months while you were gone. And I have to assume that you're innocent. So we will bring this to the courts, and the courts will decide. That person kind of is innocent because they didn't 100%. know they were breaking the law. Yeah, I just didn't realize how important the presumption of innocence is in these yeah, cases. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because we're all looking at these people like they are bad people. You're living in a place that is not yours. You're mm-hmm. fucking over this landlord. And some people do do that. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I, I imagine the majority of the most salacious stories that we hear about are in the example of this. Mm-hmm. The stories that you hear on the news, like this guy is just broke into this home. He's not paying any money. Refuses to leave. And this is this is this person's retirement. And now he's forced to go back and get a job at Walmart because he can't pay his bills because yeah. he's got the squatter. That's that story. Yeah. But there are these stories where people are taken advantage of and they have these tense rights. Okay, this is good. This is good. This is good. Keep going. So then how do you evict someone after they take over your place? There's a bunch of ways it happens. Like COVID kind of exacerbated the, the issue because then there were all these moratoriums on eviction. Right. Airbnb caused a lot of problems because someone will get an Airbnb, get it for three days, pay the 500 bucks, and then oh, it was and not leave. stay there. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. You got that. That yeah, happened to Alex. Happened. And that happens all the time. Yeah. Now, in order for that person to not be evicted, they have to be there for more than 30 days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in your cir- circumstance, they were there for more than 30. Yeah. And then- How long did they rent it? I made the mistake. They did Airbnb for a week. And then? And then they were like, yo, I'll, yo, do it I'll hit you direct and yeah. you'll make more money. And then, so after we did that, he just paid me for a week. And then he's like, ah, I'm not paying anymore. And I was like, all right, get out. He's like, no, I'm not going anywhere. Was he there for more than 30 days? He was there for six months. No, no, I mean, before he told you he's not leaving. Um, yeah, by that time, by the, yeah, I, I think it hit a month by that time. So he knew what he was doing. Yeah, he, he knew the game he, he was playing. He, the game. he has to get to a month. Once he's there for a month and he's getting mail, yeah. he has all these things done. And like, he started off super nice, super like, <sighs> oh, oh, I was like, oh, great tenant. I didn't think that he would try to fuck me over because he was like super nice. And, yeah. and the house was moment, fucked when he left, right? Yeah. Like, wow. Left. Yeah, everything was trash, fucking cigarette butts everywhere. Like, it was disgusting. Wow. Yeah. Fucked me over for six months. Wow. Yeah. It's, wow. A, it's a bitch. So, like, in order to evict someone in New York, you have to file a formal eviction notice, 10-day mm-hmm. notice on the door, mm-hmm. basically say, like, hey, get the fuck out. If they ignore that, then there's a petition for special proceedings. They have to go to a court. Yeah. Look at Al getting PTSD as you're bringing all this Bro, up. Bro, yeah. it was so bad. The squatter has to appear in court. Uh, they either appear, and then the judge almost always rules not in favor of the squatter. Like, it's right. very rare for a squatter to get it, because like we said, you have to have all of these other things to yeah. classify as a squatter. My shit is getting emails, I don't know. Um, but a lot of the, times they will that tab. make up a reason why they need to postpone the date, so they just push it further. Yeah. Uh, uh, filibuster. So now uh, you got to take off of work. You got to stop your life to make sure you show up, because if you don't show up, yeah. then <laughs> usually Man, it's costing there. you money, yeah. and you're paying for utilities, yep. and you're paying for gas, and you're so paying for this all is shit. so interesting. And they're fucking up your whole house. Yep. And they're almost incentivized to fuck up the house, because if they fuck it up, you might be like, yo, it's not worth it. And it's you, not worth it to what? To, to keep fighting. To take this back. Like, you fucked it up so bad. I'm going to take it back. I'm going to pay $50,000 in repairs. Yeah, I just don't oh, want So it. there are some people that actually give up the home. I guess. It's just not worth but it. But you would about. still have to pay back the mortgage, right? Because that's a loan from the bank. It so. depends. Like, who knows? Maybe you inherit the house. It's worth like 50000 You have a ton of money. It's like some shitty shack. The guy's a drug addict. He keeps it, trashes it. And you're like, I'm going to have to pour 100 to even get this it's not even worth working. It. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, this, is, I'm out. this is a time where you you understand why Texas is so pro-gun. <laughs> yeah. 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 And they got like castle doctrine and shit. You mm-hmm. can just like pull up and be like, yo, get, get the get fuck out. Get the fuck out. Yeah. 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 It's really interesting though. So these people are taking advantage of a policy that uh, was made to, prote- to protect tenants from abusive landlords. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
so we like the policy because there were abusive landlords. Yeah. They would yeah. just kick people out for no reason. Yeah. The policies are good. Now the landlord's got to behave. Now you got to treat those people in there well. And um, you should have a good relationship between you and the landlord because you both have a little bit of power in this circumstance. Mm -hmm. Landlord's a piece of shit. You could withhold pay and now this landlord's fucked and he doesn't want that. And now you're sitting there for six months before you can even get somebody out of the home. Yeah. And now he's six months out of rent. Think about that. That's horrible. Okay, let's be nice to each other and let's make sure that we really pick tenants that we're going to respect and care for and everything's going to be good. Symbiotic relationship. These people come in, they go, ooh, there's really favorable tenant rules and I just need to trick them into letting me be here for a month. Got it. Most yeah. people don't even know this. Yeah. Got it. And they I'm stay there for six months and then they bounce to another spot, stay there for six months, stay there for six months. These people are like typically criminals, drug addicts, mentally ill, something. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Or they'll get a roommate and live with a roommate and then change the locks on the roommate and be like, I got your place. No way. Yeah. Crazy. So this happens all the time. So it's like you kind of got to try to fix the tenant like rights thing without fucking over tenants. Yeah. And creates, like, how do you quickly find out if someone is fraudulently living there? It's really expediting that process. Yeah. And the problem is when you live in a city with 8 million people, I imagine those court systems are completely yeah. backed up. There's a million different cases they're bringing that have nothing to do with this, Yeah. right? Oh my Lord. Yeah. So they're also taking advantage of how backed up our system is. Mm -hmm. It's not very efficient. Yeah. And how do we prove that somebody should legally live there or not? You can't trust the landlords in a lot of circumstances yeah. because they're going to do anything to get people out. Yeah. And you can't trust the tenants because they're manipulating the system like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then some of them are just stuck in the crossfire. Where it's like, yo, I got a lease from this guy and now I'm I in mean, this place. I mean, that's the craziest scenario. You are a actually good citizen. Yeah. You're a good person. Mm -hmm. You're you're paying the bills. You, you pay would cash. have paid the <laughs> landlord. Yeah, you pay cash to this guy every single month. Yeah. And Man. then he leaves town and you can't get in touch with him. And so like, <sighs> as the owner of the place, you can't do anything to that person like yeah. can't threaten them with violence you can't ow that person's bro. innocent that shit was infuriating, infuriating i can imagine yeah. Yeah. but that is our justice system right yeah. it's the presumption of innocence yeah and that's why it even has to go to court we know this person's breaking the law you know they're breaking the law they know they're breaking the law it doesn't matter we got it on video we have everything that we need until the court decides that that is the case which like you said most of the times it does decide that yeah you can't do anything mm -hmm. oh that is it's wild, right? And then why do you think that this is so popular right now? So this is where it gets interesting. Yeah. So there's a couple things. These articles that I read you before, squatter wins the house of a dead woman. Yeah. All those headlines go crazy. If you search like squatter wins home, that's like 20 articles. And it's this one dude in England, which again, they kind of have like different squatter's rights laws that are like actually go back even farther. This is an actual squatter's rights situation. So the headline is squatter wins the house of a dead woman. Everyone's pissed off. Basically what happens is there's a guy that sees a decrepit house. It's all fucked up, it's falling apart. He's like a contractor working in the neighborhood and this house is just destroyed. He asks the people in the neighborhood, he's like, what's up with this house? And they're like, oh, it's been this way for like five years. It's just like, there's rats in it, there's crackheads running in and out of it, like, it's fucked. And he's like, oh, okay. And so he kind of asks around, he's trying to see who owns it, he can't get in touch with anyone, this is 97. So he just starts fixing it. And he just starts building up the house. And he does it over the course of like three, four years. Everyone's like, wow, this is amazing. Everyone in the neighborhood really likes it. They love it. it. Now you don't have this decrepit crack house in your neighborhood that's pulling the property value down. Uh, Literally. So then he starts building up the house, doesn't hear anything from anyone, tries to get in touch, can't get in touch with the owner. Like no one knows who is actually owning it. Calls the bank, the bank foreclosed that he was actually like managing with. He basically keeps it. And then in 2012, the owner comes back and he's like, yo, what happened to the house? And the guy's like, oh, now the guy that originally owned it is like 80. Basically what happened was he was living there with his mom. His mom died in like 1990. He ends up moving and going somewhere that leaves the house to ruin. This guy finds it, fixes it up, moves his family in there, lives in it, becomes a member of the community. And then this dude comes back and he's like, yo, give me my house back. And the guy's like, I've been living here, bro. You haven't been here. Didn't the bank years. foreclose? It's not his house anymore. So technically he owned it outright, but the yeah, bank I that think. gave him the original loan was no longer there. So he couldn't get in touch with whoever the actual owner was. So it's his house though. So according to the law in England at the time, I think it was like 10 years. So because he had lived in there for 10 years, it was his. And no. everyone in the community was like- I mean, he's a yeah. definitional squatter, whereas these people are not. These are scammers. Yeah, these people are yeah. trespassers and-, yeah. and I mean, out. I like that this guy allegedly did the due diligence to find the dude. Who That's knows if he actually did. But, he might have just taken advantage of you know an opportunistic situation. Yeah, but you're still building up a thing in the community. It's good. I don't Everybody, care. If it's mine, I could let- Now, 
I think the community, and I think in America, the community would have standards for your home. For yeah. example, like you have to cut your lawn yeah. a certain, what is it, the HOA yeah. association? Yeah. Like, yeah. So like HOAs would be like, hey, you have to make sure the outside is more or less clean. The lawn is cut. You have a responsibility to your community. You can't let it become decrepit. And if it does, I think the HOA can actually kick you out of the community. The city mm -hmm. can too. Oh, There's sorry, like city ordinances. Go, go, go. The most infuriating part was when that guy was squatting in my place. Yeah. It was winter time. I still had to go over there and shovel. No, <laughs> no way. Yeah. Why did you HOA? have to shovel? Because the HOA. I yeah. would get tickets. Have to I would get tickets. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, bro, I was so tight. Oh, That's no. Fuck He's inside drinking coffee yeah. while you're shoveling the fucking front lawn. I would lawn. have lost it. That's no crazy. way. Wow. Yeah, you got too but much yeah. patience. No. That's crazy. No, I, I got him out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's but, crazy. But so. yeah, so there's a circumstance. Like, if you bought some shit, which are, or you inherit, whatever it is, that is yours, bro. Mm -hmm. that just because somebody fixed it up don't mean he gets to keep it. Oh, that's losses. Yeah, but then, I don't know about but all then that. if you let it go and now it's ruining the neighborhood, it's like that's, you should that's, be. That's penalized. what I feel. No, no, I, I, you should be responsible, and the neighborhood should be able to contact you and tell you and give you warnings and say, "Hey, if you're not going to do this, then we are going to force you to sell the home or whatever it is. The bank will hold the money in escrow until you're ready, ready to claim it. You can't just let this house become dilapidated. But the idea that somebody can just fix your shit up without you even knowing. And he allegedly reached out to you, which I don't know if By I buy that. How many years passed? Ten. Ten. Yeah, I think after a certain period, I actually like that rule. Ten after years, you haven't period, looked at it, you yeah. don't value it. Yeah. Regardless if you value it or not, it's yours. Like somebody in your yeah, family you worked hard to up, get it. You fucking up the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, you're not valuing what your family worked hard for. What I'm saying is, I, I agree with you. It shouldn't be taken because he's not there for ten years. It should be taken because of what he's doing to his neighbors for ten years. Mm. And then now, for auction or something? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Now, like, he has enough violations of okay. HOA, yeah. and then it's given up for auction or whatever the fuck mm. it is. And then that money is held for him. Yeah. It's not mm. it, It's not held by the HOA. It's just held, and then when he's ready to claim it, he goes and claims it. You, you still, I think, need to disincentivize neglect. Which is the which is the fines, what you would get. That's what the HOA does. So some people do that. Where Some people suggest that they basically put a tax on vacant property. That yep. if you leave a property vacant for a certain period of time, you have an increased property tax. And Florida kind of does the opposite, where if you live in the place that you're that you yeah. own, then you basically get like a homestead tax reduction, mm. and you actually like save on taxes by living in the place. Because you, you want to incentivize people to live in that place. Mm. I just don't like this idea that like you have to go live there, especially when it's an inherited. You don't property. have to live there. You can just you see, have no, a tenant. You, you just have to keep it up. Yeah, or have you, someone yeah. come mow the lawn. Yeah, if there's some shit leaking, Agreed. have someone come fix that, it. Uh, what I'm saying to you guys is. Whatever the standard is for the community, you should have to uphold that. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, then you can go take measures to sell it. Yeah. But just because somebody else upholds the standard of the community and builds up the house doesn't mean it just becomes theirs. I don't want to incentivize that at but all. But it's like, let's say the owner of the Empire State Building just like is like, fuck it, I'm mm -hmm. not doing nothing. Yeah. And it just becomes this decrepit building. Of course. In the middle of like the jewel of America. We would... First of all, step in way before that. The city would try to do something. They would they would step in and they'd be like, listen, if you're not going to upkeep this building, we're going to keep on fining you. And eventually you get to the point where you're not uh, paying the fines. We're going to auction off this building. And mm -hmm. then whatever that building makes after it pays off all the fines and all the money that the city had to invest to upkeep it can go into an account. And that is hell for you. And it's going to be way less than if you built it up real nice and sold it. But that is your money. It's not the city's money. So you're basically saying the city can seize it, but a person can't seize it. Yes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. by seizing it, they're only they're selling it. So they're not taking it away. They're selling mm -hmm. it for whatever value is there. And then you get to keep that value. Mm -hmm. But they're basically, or they're forcing you to sell it. And if the, the first thing is what people do when they kick you out of a community, right? I think like Nicki Minaj and her uh, husband is a child sex offender. So she had to, she got, I think, kicked out of her community in LA. Did mm -hmm. you guys see that yeah, story? Yeah. Or like right. the community stepped up and they're like, we don't want a sex offender living in our area. Yeah. So I think they forced them to sell their home. So yeah. they had to sell their home. Mm -hmm. Now, if they're not willing to sell, I imagine it goes to court and then maybe the court rules that they have to because the community said, and then they forcefully sell it, but they still get the money for their home. You, mm -hmm. you, you enjoy the value going back to the person who owned it. Yeah, I think yeah, that's fair. Sure. Yeah. I just think that's fair. I, I agree. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. mind it not going back at a certain point. That To me, it's a lot of it is just tied into the duration. Like yeah. 10 years of neglect is a long time of yeah. neglect. And my issue with the tenant's rights in New York is 30 days is not enough mm -hmm. To be like, nah, I live here. You can't get me out. Yeah, which if is that time different. was a year, 
and squatters rights is 10 years. I, I'm okay yeah. with both as if the duration makes sense to me. 10 years makes sense to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's really all I'm saying. If it's 10 years of neglect, I don't feel you should be rewarded in any form or fashion for 10 years of neglect. All this to say, people are reading the headline being like, oh, some dude went in there while they were on lunch and then stole the place. Not what happened. Right. 